So that's me out again, fishing. It's eight o'clock on Sunday morning. It'll be too hot to fish in an hour, maybe two hours, so. Got some other things on today, so I'll just have a couple hours and see how we go on. A slight change of tactics today, rather than fishing dry flies, I'm fishing with a pair of nymphs, which I'll fish upstream under a New Zealand style strike indicator and we'll see how it goes Right, we're going here I had a few casts further downstream I think the nymph I've got on the tail is maybe a bit too heavy, it keeps getting caught up in the bottom I'll have a couple of casts right here anyway and if I get caught up I'll just have to put something a bit lighter on. Got, I think it's about a two millimetre tungsten beadhead nymph on the tail, and one of Stu Tripney's pogo nymphs on the dropper, which has got a, a foam thorax, which makes it bob about as you can imagine. And something that works quite well. But if I've got a feeling I'm going to get caught up here as soon as I start fishing, but I'll give it a few casts and see. Now, a few years ago there used to be a big snag right in the middle of this pool, so let's hope it's gone. Because I can't see anything. From here anyway. Here we go. Different tactic for the last time I was out. <laughs> Similarly small fish. So far anyway. Got a feeling the fish will be up in the faster water because there's a bit more oxygen in it. And another one. Nymph fishing is very, very effective. Slightly bigger than the last one. So they put up a better fight anyway. Come on then. An average size luring fish, what about nine inches or something like that? Beautiful wild trout. There you go. Actually astonished I haven't caught up in the bottom yet. The fly's tied on a jig hook, the heavy nymph's tied on a jig hook which swims upside down. And here's another one, this is in the pogo in for this time. Another wee one. And that's off. Your nymph fishing lights, you better keep the line as short as you possibly can. The less line on the water, the less drag, the more effective it is. Another one. Oh, I think I've just caught up in the bottom. My goodness me. Yeah, there's a snag over there and it swam straight into it. That's a bugger, I'll get it out. But unfortunately it'll screw up the fishing in this in the in the pool now. 
Which is a bummer, but there you go. Right, that was a, a, a slightly better fish actually. Maybe about 10 inches. But as I say, that's now screwed up fishing in this pool. Yeah, nymph fishing is very, very effective. Upstream nymphing is pro probably the deadliest way to fly fish for trout. A lot more effort involved than just swinging flies downstream, but you catch a lot more fish. You see the rain in this pool here, tail this pool here. There we go. Another wee thing. See, a lot of fishermen would just walk past water like this. But in these wee burns, every pocket holds fish. Albeit tiddlers, very often. When you come to fish a wee burn like this, you've got to put your expectations in perspective. You know, this is not New Zealand. There's a, a wee river we fish in Southland in New Zealand called the Hamilton Burn. I think it's a tributary of the Aparima. And it's no bigger than this. It's got three, four pound trout in it. Probably bigger than that, in fact. I think the biggest type has been about three and a half, three and three quarters, which is a good trout anywhere. But on the Lunan, a half pounder's a, a decent fish. A wild trout, anyway. This can be a good pool, but again, it's getting a bit overgrown. That willow tree is encroaching on the whole pool. I'm probably going to get caught up in it. Again, there's probably a better chance of fishing the rough water further up. Put some real nice fish out here in the past, but just getting a cast at the moment. It's a bit awkward. So try up a bit around the other side of the tree. Hopefully we'll get a cast in there. God, I'm gonna. I'm going to get tangled up here, almost guaranteed. So I think I'll we'll just risk going up a bit further. Yeah, I'm going to come down here with a pair of loppers. It only really took five minutes. Oh, oh! And on and off. All right, let's see if we can get over here with it falling in. There's a couple of wee fish rising there when I came around the corner. But I want to get up so I can fish this rougher water up here with the nymphs. Oh my god. At least if I fall in I don't have far to go to go home. Go. Another record breaker. But they're all genuine wild trout. I think the 
club, the angling club, stocked some bigger fish in here recently. Around about here somewhere, I'm guessing, I'm not sure. So there's a slight chance of coming into contact with one of those. We shall see. Dark fish for the loon. But you go. Now this is quite a productive spot here, but it's a bit of a devil a place to cast. We'll have a go. It's more a question of lobbing than casting here. It'd be an absolute miracle if I don't get caught up in some of these trees. Accurate placement is not the thing here, we've just got to get it out. Up there in the tree straight away. It'll come out though. Oh, oh, that was a fish. And it's gone. That seemed to be a bit better, that one. That's promising. <laughs> 